talking about being competitive, there's a lovely scene at the end of the book where you're playing golf and you're out on the golfing range yeah. with Carl Froch <laughs> yeah. and he starts hitting the ball better than you. Yeah. <laughs> what happened then? Yeah, we had to give it, was, it was on a driving range, me and Carl Froch. Uh, Elliot was there and Ronald McIntosh as well. He was he was out there and he was yeah, out in Jamaica. Colleague, yeah, yeah, BBC colleague. He was out there in Jamaica, and um, went down to driving range because I was, was staying on the trial club um, golf resort. And uh, yeah, it was just uh, me, me and Cole started going at it. You know, the competitive, the competitiveness in, in, in each other we, we really went. And we was trying to do anything to beat each other. It was, it was, it was tough. <laughs> <laughs> a couple of texts. Pete and Ness in Worcester say, as soon as David Hay announces his comeback fight, me and the <laughs> wife will be booking tickets. We love you, David. Uh, Chris in Chester says, David, just want to say thanks for some great entertainment uh, in and out of the ring. You've been a great ambassador for the sport. Don't apologise for anything. All the best for your next choice. Um, Jeff is on the line from New Barnet. Hi, Jeff. Hi, good evening. Good evening, David. Uh, good evening. I'm way before your time. My nemesis was a man called Dick McTaggart. OK. <laughs> yeah, and you know who Dick was? Yeah, yeah, I do. Not only the gold medalist at the Olympics, the supreme boxer, I had the misfortune of fighting him five times and lost every time. <laughs> every and I'm glad you're like me, David. you got your brains. I've got university degrees, so don't let anybody tell you we're all a load of punk drunk. <laughs> OK, <laughs> yeah. I won't. The, the thing I want to ask you, David, I, I obviously was a lightweight, sometimes light welter, but mm-hmm. how on earth did you manage with that Belyachev, or whatever his name was, the Russian? And the big, <laughs> yeah, it was it was difficult. I realised that I couldn't sort of mix it up in close quarters with him because I think he had about seven stone advi- weight advantage on me. So I had to use my a lot of lateral movement. I had to make him miss and make him pay. And um, I spent a lot of time with Adam Booth in the gym with a uh, big, tall sparring partners. Adam put these... I was going to ask you, how, how big was your sparring? I, I, think... train, I still train these days, and I, I train with a 20-stone, 6-foot-4 former American college footballer. <laughs> <laughs> OK. I mean, now keeps you on your toes. I weigh 12 and a half, but there we are. <laughs> So yeah. How on earth did you manage with this with this guy? Please tell me. Um, it was it just I have a lot of movement, a lot of lateral movement, head movement. I had to make sure that you know he couldn't touch me with his jab because uh, we found watching vague tapes of him. Once he started landing his jab, he, he got a real foothold in the fight, and he'd start working off that jab. He'd, he'd let he'd, he wouldn't let his right hand go if he hadn't touched you with the jab. So I had to make sure that the jab didn't land. And when he started looking for the single right hand, making him, making him miss and making him pay, and uh, not worrying about um, landing too many punches per round, you know, I was, I was happy to land 10 clean shots around as long as he didn't land any more than one or two on me. And we stuck to the game plan and we knew that no way could a, a judge say, I've lost a round if I've landed 10 punches and he's landed two punches. So we stuck to the game plan and we was happy with the result. Did he hurt you when he landed? Um, I felt his. I felt the weight of his shot. You know, he hit me. He hit me with a, a hit me with one jab. I think I can't remember what round it was in. And I remember thinking, okay, that's why we've been practicing not to land, get. That's why we've been practicing not to get hit with a jab because you know you can feel it right down to your boots. So I made sure there was, was very few shots in there that he hit me with um, because uh, I wouldn't have enjoyed getting hit by him to be honest. Mm. Jeff, thanks very much indeed for your call. That was Jeff in New Barnet. A um, couple of texts for you. Um, with the future of another British world champion in mind, says Robin uh, in state drop I think that is um, how good can Tyson Fury be um, I'm not sure you know I haven't actually seen that much of him um, I've watched him live once when he fought um, John McDermott uh, the first time round I think it was a draw did he win that one was it the yeah, he got that, and it was, he uh, got that it was a massive inquest into the decision. Yeah, and why yeah he, won, he, won it, he won the rematch, but I've watched, I've watched him live once, and I've, I've, I had him losing that particular fight. Um, it was early on in his career, and, and, and I've heard he's got a lot better since then. You know, he beat um, Derek Chisora for the British title, um, so he's, 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 he's on the up. Um, I don't know, it's, it's unknown, he hasn't really fought anybody uh, yet who is sort of European mm. level. Uh, to, to really test him and push him but um, uh, f- fingers crossed he'll, he'll have some uh, meaningful fights in, 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 in the near future against guys who we sort of know the name of and uh, you know he's got the physical stature he's massive like 6 foot 10 or something like that you know he's, uh, he's, he's he, can, he can dig so fingers crossed he'll, he'll be having some uh, some good fights with uh, the likes of uh, David Price you know he, he's someone who I've I, I sparred with for the Vladimir fight Someone I, 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 I trained with uh, as an amateur as well. He's a he's an Olympian. So I believe uh, Tyson Fury and uh, 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 David Price will uh, rules uh, battle it out. Um, but I, going by the prior, prior experience, prior records, I'd go with uh, David Price to to beat him on points. David Price actually beat him as an amateur, and I believe he'll probably do the same uh, as a professional. Who was your hero when you were growing up? Um, I've had I had a few heroes. Um, Nigel Benn was a massive um, sort of inspiration to me when I first started fighting. 
um, the way he used to come to the ring, the way he used to to literally let let his hands go. You know, he wasn't the most skilled boxer. He wasn't like a pretty boxer whatsoever. It was it was pure guts and speed and power and. Uh, and that's what I really sort of identified with when I first started boxing, because I didn't, I wasn't the most skilled boxer myself. I, you know, I used to just rely on my power and speed. So watching him was was uh, was magic. Um, then sort of Nas the Nassim Hamid era came along with you know the showmanship and you know the, the ring entrances and punching from crazy angles. Um, loved that. And then obviously you had um, you know obviously Chris Eubank along the way. Um, obviously Lennox Lewis. And it's Lewis, someone who just always, always went out there and, and done and did the job. You know, he didn't say much outside the ring, but when he got in the ring, he said all he needed to say. And uh, and obviously Roy Jones Jr. You know, in, in my late teens, you know, watching him ruling the light heavyweight division, going up to heavyweight and winning the heavyweight title. For me, you know, all those guys have all had an, sort of an impact on my my career and and, my, and and how I see boxing. And you kind of felt the need to watch some of these in, yeah. in the immediate moments yeah. before you left for the walk to the ring. Yeah, exactly. I used to watch a lot of uh, Roy Jones, you know, James Tony, um, but, uh, Shane Mosley, guys who were fast, guys who you know didn't fight with their face, didn't take clean shots continuously, you know, because that's the way I wanted to fight. You know, so I watched these guys, watched the speed, the reflexes, the timing, and hope like, and hoped some of it would rub off on me. <laughs> and it seemed to it seemed to have worked. You know, you know, when, when I watched them, I it's like watching a fight, watching a Gatti uh, Ward fight. Now it's the last type of fight I'd want to watch before I went out to have a fight because first off, you give you a headache watching the amount of punches they take. Um, so I wanted to watch someone in a real one-sided fight because that's in the ideal world you want to go out there, land your shots, and not get hit with one back. And, does it, so does it make you sad to watch Roy Jones? Fighting now, it does. And it getting does. Beaten yeah, and... getting beaten by guys that I know and everybody knows. Roy knows his opponents know shouldn't shouldn't be anywhere near close to even competing with him, let alone beating him and knocking him out. You know, it's it's, it's a it's a real shame that um, he's still still fighting because um, I believe he's definitely one of the all time greats. And it seems like with every fight he has, he kind of undoes some of his legacy. You know, for me, I'll always remember Roy for, in his peak. You know, I know some people judge him now by his last five fights, but that's really unfair to do that. Mm. Um, I, I remember him in, in, in his heyday for sure. Um, I'm going to try and be your agent if for a second now here, David, because I've <laughs> uh, got Keith Armstrong on the line who's got a proposition to put to you, I think. Okay. Hi, Keith. <laughs> Hi, how are you doing? <laughs> how you doing, Keith? Hey, I'm great, David. Great. I'm a big fan. Oh, brilliant. Uh, yeah, I'm interested. I've been hearing about your uh, acting aspirations and... Um, we're currently in the middle of developing a script about... Uh, it's a movie about a guy called Johnny Walker from Newcastle. I'm okay. from Newcastle. Who um, had a dream of saving the boxing clubs in the northeast by bringing Ali over to uh, Newcastle. OK. And he managed to do it. And in the movie, there's kind of parts for an Ali and a Sonny Liston who he always dreams about seeing on his shoulders, kind of like a devil and an angel. Yeah. So... The script's ready in December. It's a serious movie. It's Hollywood back in stuff. And uh, so I wonder if you've got an agent. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, I have, and I'll uh, I'll get you the details afterwards. Sounds 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 interesting. <laughs> that sounds. Like, are you guys got? You've got a little I smile. Like, I, like, I like the sound of that. I really yeah. like the sound thinking, of that. Yeah, we're thinking Idris Elba is Sonny Liston. Mm -hmm. Idris is um, amazing. He really is brilliant. Yeah. So there you go. Sounds, so sounds so are you offering him Ali? To get it to I'm offering <laughs> to yeah, I'm offering him Ali. <laughs> <laughs> I'm offering the script. I'd love you to read the script. That's I'd love, I'd love to read it. I'd love to read it. Sounds, sounds really interesting. Oh, that sure, sounds, I can sounds... send the synopsis to away and we'll send you the script later. Good Excellent. Stuff. Oh, well, we'll look forward to hearing that, hearing, hearing more nice about that. You, yeah. uh, well, stay on the line, Keith, and we'll, we'll, I think we've got your details and we'll pass them on to David. Um, so, um, so I, actually, Mike just hinted at um, your, your pre-fight preparations and something else that I found fascinating was the, the fact that before you went out to fight, you would tidy up your hotel room. <laughs> yeah, it's... Uh, Strange superstition I had. I always. You, I mean, you were staying in nice hotels. Staying nice, but I'd, I'd purposely be messy for the, for the for the for three or four days I was there, just leaving food everywhere, just so it gave me something to do there to the fight. Maybe it's just to get my mind off the fight. I don't know why I did it. Maybe it's to leave knowing everything was neat and tidy. So maybe you go out there with a, a, a neat, a sharper mentality. I don't know, but I felt the need to tidy the day of a fight. When everyone's thinking, how are you feeling? I'm like, I don't know, I just want to get this room tidy. <laughs> so strange thing, everyone used to come in and look at me saying, and you got a maid who can do that? Like, yeah, I have, but I'd rather do it myself, make sure it's done properly. So you like that at home as well? No, at home I'm absolutely terribly messy. Never tidy up at home. <laughs> only, only, <laughs> so by rights I'm never going to tidy ever again. <laughs> in the end, did it become superstition? It did, I ended up, yeah, it you did. Had to I had it. to do it. I couldn't leave 
unless it was uh, tidy. Mm. I wouldn't. I'd go out and have another look in just to make sure. Go around every I, to the point where we opened in the cupboards to make sure everything was hung up and everything was neat. And I tidy. mean, the other thing is that, and this was before you beat Value F in Nuremberg. You went for walks at like two and three in mm. the morning around mm. Nuremberg because yeah. I once spoke to Adam on the phone. He said, "Oh, we're out walking with, yeah. with David and and." Pals and I think yeah. Elliot was there as well, but yeah, just we we. I know I'm, I'm up strange hours. Would yeah. go crazy not getting a good night's sleep. Yeah. You would think that's absolutely prerequisite to to producing the kind of performance you did. I, one thing one thing I tried to do in, you know, before fights is to live my life. I, I try to do on the day of a fight what I do on a normal day, and I, my sleeping patterns are all over the shop. Sometimes I go to sleep at four o'clock. Sometimes I train till two two a.m. in the morning, and uh, so I'm used to I'm used to working going to sleep at crazy hours and sleeping during the day I'm just my time's so all over the shop so day before a fight if I'm not tired why well, sit around a room watching some German TV you might just go out and have a walk and uh, that's what we did and people kept looking at us thinking what are you doing out and so because you're suffering everyone else has got to come out yes yeah, yeah. so everyone else has yeah so I <laughs> r- r- rang up the troops and everyone's like oh, God, aren't you fighting tomorrow David go back to sleep Cause, well, cause Adam, let's go for a walk Adam Booth stuck with you didn't he through, yeah. through all of these things, mm. times and by, by you know some of the accounts in the book you were not easy to train sometimes apparently not no reading it back I, I look like an absolute nightmare to train um, you know, I, I like to do things the way I wanted to do them and sulking and I don't know it's I can't remember doing it, but uh, apparently everyone around me says, "Yes, it's exactly how you are, David." So, um, but clearly Adam was prepared to forgive you. Yeah, yeah. Adam, Adam knows. Adam knows. Adam's boxed himself. He knows what it's like to be a fighter. He knows the the stresses and strains that you're under. And different people show show it in different ways. You know, some people sit in the room crying. You know, obviously, I'm just being a bit annoying to everybody and uh, winding people up and falling out with people and not talking to anyone. Um, and trainers face the same kind of pressure as well in themselves. They have a reputation. They want to win mm. as well. I remember, um, and, and it's really important for a trainer to be calm in yeah, the corner because any definitely. kind of panic transmits yeah, to exactly, you. Exactly, exactly. And we crossed at one stage during the Value F fight, rather than go to Bunsey or, or Richie Woodall, whoever was there, we crossed into the corner. They've got microphones in the corner. And Adam just said at one stage, I can't remember the round, but it was about halfway. And he said, you're coming down to his level don't fall down to mm. his kind of pace, yeah. just lift it again. Yeah. And that's a simple comment, yeah. 10 seconds, that's all it needs. Yeah. No ranting and raving for no. the full minute. Just Screaming and shouting, up. slap him in the face. and just, yeah. You're coming down to his level, <laughs> yeah. raise it again. And that yeah. sometimes, that can be the difference. Mm. A, a single comment can be the difference between winning and losing. Mm. A couple of tweets to read you, David. Um, Daza says, uh, you've given us lads some great fights to watch and cheer uh, cheer you on um, thanks for the memories enjoy South Beach Miami in retirement pal <laughs> um, and Stroller says uh, great interview with David Hay fascinating listening not many articulate fighters around like him wish him well in his retirement and Terry says I'm a trainee psychic and as yet I can only see dimly into the future I am getting David Hay following Audley onto Strictly <laughs> <laughs> any chance? I don't know Audley's actually doing really well he is you know, when, I, when, when they first mentioned it I wasn't, I wasn't quite sure how he'd, uh, how he'd translate with his big set 17 size feet and his big uh, 18 stone frame. I wasn't sure how nimble he'd be on the dance floor. But, you know, he's, uh, he's proved a lot of people wrong. He's, he's still there. He's still going. And, uh, you know, he's I'm, I'm he's practising tonight. For 10 minutes, he had your space in the car park. Did <laughs> <laughs> There's a speaker. <laughs> he's, he's actually trimmed right up as well. He's lost a stone, lost over a stone. You know, so maybe, maybe this is his calling. I, I can you know? see the competitive David Hay kicking in again. <laughs> if Audley couldn't beat you in the ring, maybe he can beat you uh, on the street. Maybe, strictly. maybe. Uh, listen, the book is really, really well worth reading. I mean, there are lots of good boxing books out there, but this is uh, definitely up there with The Making Hay, it's called. Uh, it's um, written by Elliot Warsell, um, who, uh, with full cooperation from David Hay, even the warts. Yep. <laughs> um, and uh, it's been lovely to have you with us for the oh, last hour. It's been good. It's, it's been good by. to be here. David Hay, thank you very much indeed.